Hey everyone, this is Digital Charcuter. Thanks for stopping by. I really appreciate it. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. We're talking Star Wars today. If you want longer podcast form of Star Wars, I have the Rebel Scum podcast channel that you can check out. Also, uh, where we do podcasts every week on that channel. Ahsoka Season 2 is shooting in spring 2025, which is only a few short months away. Should be done shooting by this time next year with a possible release date of 2026. The way it's working with one Star Wars live action series a year, that would mean we have Skeleton Crew at the end of this year and or next year, and then Ahsoka the following year. It would all make sense. And speculation has been running rampant about who and what the villain of that season will be and what the season as a whole will be about. I've done videos on the channel you can check out here. We've talked Abeloth, we've talked Grisk, we've talked it all. But what if they're not doing something to that scale as of yet? What if they're going to do baby steps for a little while and establish the world? I have this belief right now that Star Wars is in a bit of a reset. They're trying to reset the franchise. They want to take away from the original trilogy, from the sequel trilogy stuff, from the Skywalker saga, if you will. And they're going to propel us in a new direction, which would start with Ahsoka, with the Mandoverse, basically. But Ahsoka, Sabine, Ezra, Mando, Grogu, all of them. And to do that, they're going to use Ahsoka Season 2 and the Mando and Grogu movie to establish the new Star Wars lore universe that they want to expand upon. So in doing that, would it make sense for a Grisk or for an Abeloth to appear right away? I think down the road, eventually, yes, those things would be great to dive into to see how they handle those. And they would be great threats for our heroes to face. That being said, I don't know if you do that right away in Ahsoka Season 2 of you know a very large scale adventure that we're hopefully going to go on and hopefully going to enjoy. So I'm going to reel it in for this episode and talk just a little bit about maybe Swan has a bigger plan and what that plan could be. Then you must be General Balan Skull. Let's talk about the theory that Thrawn's true goal isn't immediate conquest, but using the chaos caused by Sabine's actions in the first season of Ahsoka to fracture the New Republic, gain their trust, and manipulate their system from within. Through this, Thrawn can quietly rebuild the Empire using the New Republic's own resources and influence, ultimately turning them into unwitting allies in his rise to power. We're going to start with Sabine. Her choice to hand the map to Balin's skull, which directly led to Thrawn's return, was a devastating blow to the New Republic. But this wasn't just a tactical mistake. It created the perfect scenario for Thrawn to exploit Rather than simply using Sabine's betrayal to demoralize the New Republic, Thrawn could use it as leverage to undermine their trust in themselves and each other. Sabine's decision represents more than a personal failure. It symbolizes the fragility of the New Republic's alliance. Former rebels like Sabine, trusted members of the New Republic, are now seen capable of treason. This creates a rift within the government and military leadership, especially between those like Hera Syndulla, who defended Sabine, and others like Senator Zono, who already had suspicions. By allowing Sabine to live, Thrawn set the stage for these divisions to deepen, destabilizing the very fabric of the New Republic. Thrawn is a master tactician who knows how to play the long game. Instead of immediately launching a full-scale assault on the New Republic, he can use the distrust sown by Sabine's actions to his advantage. The political rifts will grow as the fallout from the betrayal spreads, with key figures like Senator Ziono seizing the opportunity to discredit Hera and her allies. The internal strife will weaken the New Republic, leaving the vulnerable to external manipulation. Here's where Thrawn's brilliance truly shines. Rather than staying on the outside and waiting for the New Republic to implode, Thrawn could present himself as a solution. By offering his strategic insights into the galaxy's threats, perhaps even exaggerating the dangers of other Imperial remnants or rising factions, he could position himself as a valuable asset. After all, who better to advise the New Republic on handling Imperial threats than the man who once commanded the Empire's most elite forces? Through subtle manipulation, Thrawn could begin earning the trust of key New Republic leaders. While some, like Hera, would remain suspicious, others might see Thrawn as the only one capable of stabilizing the galaxy's growing instability. Slowly but surely, Thrawn would worm his way into their inner circles, using the trust he builds to further his true objective. Once Thrawn has established himself as a trusted figure within the New Republic, the real plan can begin. 
Using the New Republic's resources, Thrawn could quietly rebuild the Empire from the inside. With access to their ships, supplies, and political influence, Thrawn could start rallying Imperial loyalists, funding hidden operations, and even covertly building fleets under the guise of security measures for the New Republic. This is where Thrawn's genius lies, not in brute force, but in using the very systems designed to prevent the Empire's return as tools to bring it back. By the time the New Republic realizes what's happening, it could be too late. Thrawn would have rebuilt the Empire's infrastructure, infiltrated key positions of power, and reestablished Imperial influence across the galaxy, all without firing a single shot. And here's the most chilling part. Because Thrawn gained their trust, the New Republic might not even see him as a threat. He could present his empire as a stabilizing force in the face of a galactic chaos, ensuring his return to power is seen as a necessary evil by those whom he manipulates. In this way, Thrawn doesn't need to destroy the New Republic from the outside. He can turn it into a tool for his own ends. Sabine Wren's actions may have been driven by her desire to save Ezra Bridger. But in the end, they could be the key to the Empire's rebirth. As the truth of Thrawn's infiltration comes to light, many within the New Republic will place the blame squarely on Sabine. After all, it was her betrayal that allowed Thrawn to return and set his plan into motion. This could lead to a massive loss of faith in the New Republic's ability to govern and protect the galaxy. Citizens, soldiers, and politicians alike would question how a former rebel, a supposed hero, could have committed such a grave error. Even if the New Republic survives Thrawn's infiltration, the damage to its reputation and unity could be irreparable. Thrawn's endgame isn't just about conquering the galaxy, it's about controlling it. By infiltrating the New Republic and using their resources to rebuild the Empire, he ensures that any victory the New Republic achieves will ultimately serve his purposes. Whether they realize it or not, they will be complicit in the Empire's return, and by the time they wake up to that fact, it will be too late. Thrawn's strategy here is one of subtlety and manipulation, proving once again that his brilliance lies not in overwhelming force, but in understanding how to use his enemies against themselves. Sabine's betrayal was the first step in his plan, and now the future of the galaxy hangs in the balance. In the end, Sabine Wren's actions might have done more to help Thrawn than any Imperial loyalist ever could. By creating a rift in the New Republic, Thrawn now has the perfect opportunity to infiltrate their ranks, earn their trust, and secretly rebuild the Empire from within. And as the galaxy slowly falls under his influence, the New Republic will be none the wiser until it's far too late. And those are my thoughts on what could possibly happen on Ahsoka Season 2. It obviously remains to be seen. I don't know where Filoni's going with it. We obviously have Balin Skull and Shinhati, who are my favorite characters of this series. We don't know what they're up to, Abeloth. Something's going on over there. But for the majority, for the Thrawn portion of this, this is something that I could see play out. Thrawn is a master manipulator. We haven't quite seen that yet. I would love to see it, and this would be a great way to do it. We don't know what's at hand here. We know that the First Order is coming, and we know that there's a resistance to that First Order, and there's obviously the New Republic. So there's a split going on. We don't know what it is. Time will tell, but this could be a lot of fun. Ahsoka Season 2, are you looking forward to it? Let me know in the comments down below. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I really appreciate it. Give us a like and a subscribe, and until next time, may the force of others be with you.